What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another gun guide. This is a series where I go into great detail with all of the stats of every one of the weapons in Modern Warfare, and in today's episode, we're finally gonna be wrapping up the pistol category and covering the 357. And first up, as always, let's have a look at the damage profile. Now the damage profile for the 357 is very similar to the Desert Eagle, but it is a little bit different at longer ranges. And just like with all the pistols, we have different multipliers for the limbs, the lower torso, and the upper torso. But the main thing to point out here is with the lower torso, it's going to be a two to three shot kill depending on the range. Whereas with the upper torso, it's always a two shot kill. And that's what separates it from the Desert Eagle. The Desert Eagle does drop off to a three shot kill range to the body, even if you're shooting them in the upper torso, whereas the 357 doesn't. As for our headshots, up close we deal 113 damage to the head, so this does have a one shot headshot potential. Now, getting into rate of fire, this is extremely slow at 139 rounds per minute. This is significantly slower than even the Desert Eagle, and this means this gun is extremely unforgiving if you're missing any shots. This also means that our time to kill potential isn't very good if we're getting those body shots. Even when you're getting a two-shot kill, your time to kill is extremely slow at 431 milliseconds. And then if you miss a shot and you need that third shot, it's going to be 862 milliseconds, which most guns can kill you about four times before you're able to get a three shot kill with the 357. So the only saving grace here when it comes to time to kill potential is headshots. If you manage to get a headshot, it will be an instant kill. As for ranges, as you can see here, our first damage range that extends out to 25 meters. This is a guaranteed two shot kill at this point, even to the limbs. And this is the range that you're able to get a one-shot kill to the head. Anything beyond that, it will not be a one-shot kill to the head. But after that, our second damage range there that extends out to roughly 32 meters or so, that's the range where you're still able to get a two-shot kill to the lower torso. And then beyond that, it's going to be a three-shot kill unless you're hitting the upper torso or head, in which case you can still get a two-shot kill. Just a quick comparison for you guys, this is what the 357's ranges look like in comparison to the 50GS's ranges. So you can see that it is pretty significantly better when it comes to its one-shot kill potential to the head in comparison to the Desert Eagle. As for hardcore, the 357 will always be a one-shot kill in hardcore unless you're shooting through some form of cover. Moving on to hipfire, as you can see here, we've got the same hipfire properties as the 50GS, and that's to say that it isn't really great in this department, especially compared to the more lightweight pistols. Now, taking a look at Idle Sway, you can see that there's actually a decent amount of Idle Sway here. It is quite unpredictable, and this is absolutely going to impact your ability to line up that perfect headshot at mid to longer ranges. When it comes to recoil, though, that's one area where the 357 kind of shines. As you can see here, the gun perfectly recenters between every single shot that you fire due to its really low fire rate. And as a result, you end up with a really nice grouping with this without having to worry about any sort of recoil control. When it comes to handling, our aim down sight time is 267 milliseconds, which is definitely the slowest in the pistol category, and this is actually slower than some of the assault rifles in the game. It's a similar story with our sprint out time, this is 234 milliseconds, which is almost double the sprint out time of all of the other pistols in the game. Also, when it comes to our tactical sprint time, this is 267 milliseconds, which again, this is extremely slow for a pistol at least. It's fast for an assault rifle, but it's very slow for a pistol. This brings us to our capacity, which is 6 rounds, with 12 in reserve. And our standard reload add time is 2 seconds flat, which is pretty slow for a pistol. Several of the other pistols will reload in half the time, with larger capacities as well. Now if you didn't want to cut this down, you could cut your reload time down very significantly, down to 1.15 seconds. And that's a massive improvement, and therefore I definitely recommend sleight of hand. As for our movement speed, this is very fast, it's a little bit slower than lightweight pistols, but it's still incredibly fast at 102%, and our aim down sight strafe speed is also pretty quick at 67%. So that covers it for a lot of the basic stats for the 357. however there's a couple other things to mention. First up, bullet velocity, while it is a little bit faster than the lightweight pistols, this is still something you generally have to compensate for if you're trying to shoot at somebody that's at mid to somewhat longer ranges. And on top of that, one of the worst things about this pistol is it has a double action delay. What this means is when you pull the trigger, the gun doesn't go off immediately. It's designed to mimic a double action revolver to where you have to pull that trigger all the way down and it takes some time to do that in order for the hammer to come back and then release. This double action delay is about 80 to 100 milliseconds, and this will throw your shot off in so many situations, especially against a moving target. If you're trying to hit that headshot, 
it's extremely difficult to time this right because not only do you have to lead for bullet velocity, you also have to think about the fact that the gun isn't going to go off the moment you pull the trigger. There's going to be a delay. And for me at least, this is the big thing that makes the 357 one of my least favorite guns in the entire game. I think it would have been really cool if you could fire this single action. Like, you know how you can switch from a burst to a semi-auto, for instance, or from full auto to semi-auto on a lot of guns. I think it would have been great if they mapped that button so that you could use that to cock the hammer before getting into a situation, so then you're firing single action, at least for the first shot. So then you could have that great first shot accuracy, there would be a trade-off where you have to manually cock that hammer. I think that would make the 357 a lot more competitive with the other pistols because as it is now with this double action delay, I straight up hate this pistol. But in either case, it's time to move into some of the unique attachments and we're gonna kick it off with the barrels. The first barrel is the snub nose barrel and with this one, it slightly improves your aim down sight time by just one frame at 60 FPS. And on top of that, our overall movement speed is increased by one and a half percent, which is a nice little boost. Now the downside to this is first up, our bullet velocity is reduced, so it's gonna be harder to hit those moving targets at mid to longer ranges. And to go along with that, our overall damage range is reduced by 15%. Finally, it also says that we lose some recoil control, but when you have a look at it side by side right here, honestly, you can't really tell a difference. It's still gonna be very accurate. It recenters nicely between each one of your shots. So overall, if you're trying to speed this gun up a little bit, it's not a terrible choice as an attachment, but just keep in mind the main thing is you will be reducing your overall ranges by 15%. Now, moving into the second barrel, this is the Silverfield Ordnance 357 barrel, and with this one, we get increased damage range, and this increase is 20%, which is a really nice boost. And on top of that, our overall bullet velocity is improved, so it is going to be easier to hit those moving targets. The only stated downside to this barrel is a loss of your aim down sight speed, which, based on my testing, it doesn't actually change your aim down sight time, at 60 FPS at least, and therefore, this barrel is all upsides, and I highly recommend using it if you've got it unlocked. But finally, we have one last barrel to cover here, and this is the 357 long barrel. And with this one, we get a 35% increase to our damage range, which is a very big increase. And on top of that, it improves our bullet velocity and our recoil control, which let's just have a look at it right here. As you can see, once again, there's really not much of a noticeable change to our recoil control, just because this gun's already basically pinpoint accurate when it comes to recoil and therefore it doesn't really get much better than that. Getting into the cons of this barrel, our aim down sight speed is reduced by two frames at 60 FPS, so our new aim down sight time is 300 milliseconds, which is extremely slow for a pistol. On top of that, our overall movement speed is reduced by 4.5%, and that is a massive reduction to movement speed, and as a result, I wouldn't recommend this barrel. The upsides of this just simply aren't worth the downsides, especially when the previous barrel has no downsides at all and it still gives a nice boost to your range. So that covers it for the barrels, but the 357 also has some unique stock attachments. The first one is the Lockwood 357 Custom Stock. And with this one, we get improved recoil control, which, similar story to earlier, as you can see here, recoil is pretty much exactly the same here. But on top of this, it improves our aim walking steadiness and our aiming stability. And if we put it side by side with the base, the first thing you'll notice is your sight picture changes completely because the gun is much closer to your face. But on top of that, you'll also notice that there's still a decent amount of idle sway. Like it slows the movement down a little bit and it moves slightly less, but you've still got quite a bit of idle sway there. As for the downsides, our aim down sight speed is slowed down by one frame at 60 FPS. And the big thing here is our aim down sight strafe speed is significantly reduced. This is a 28% reduction to our aim down sight strafe speed, which is huge. So overall, I'm just not seeing enough benefit out of this attachment, and I would never consider using it. As for the next one, this is the FSS Raider stock, and this has all the same upsides and downsides, just to different degrees. So once again, you can see it's supposed to help with our recoil control, but you're not really going to notice much of a difference since it's already so accurate anyways. And it's a very similar story with our aiming steadiness. As you can see there, yeah, it helps a little bit, but you've still got a pretty significant amount of idle sway while aiming down sight. As for the downsides, we get that same reduction to our aim down sight speed. It's just one frame slower at 60 FPS. And our aim down sight straight speed is only reduced by 14%. I say only, that is still a pretty massive reduction, but it's nowhere close to the reduction that you get with the other stock. In either case, I'm still just not really seeing the benefit of using this, and I wouldn't consider using this stock. 
So that covers it for the stocks. Now let's move into the trigger attachments. And I'm just going to put the values up on screen here. You can see that the lightweight trigger is once again going to be my go-to just because it improves your rate of fire. And therefore it just straight up improves your time to kill potential, which this gun desperately needs. And overall, up until this point, I would say I absolutely despise this gun. This is one of my least favorite guns to use in any Call of Duty game ever until you unlock Snake Shot. Once you get Snake Shot, which I believe you unlock at level 29 for this gun, it suddenly becomes one of the best secondary weapons in the entire game. So with this, it basically turns this into a little pocket shotgun. And the first thing we'll look at is our spread when hip firing versus aiming down sight, which you can clearly see it is very beneficial to be aiming down sight with snake shot. It tightens up that spread significantly. So you maximize the number of pellets you're hitting. Next, I want to look at the maximum hit potential. And as you can see here, it's about 23 meters. Anything beyond 23 meters, you can't even deal damage with the snake shot. And then finally, let's have a look at our maximum one shot kill potential, assuming every one of the pellets hits. And this is just a little bit over eight meters, which is not too bad at all, especially for a secondary weapon that you can kind of spam as well. It's also worth noting that with the barrels, we get the same impacts to our damage ranges. So the snub nose will reduce your ranges by 15%, silver field will increase by 20%, and the long barrel will increase by 35%. Overall though, the big takeaway from this is the snake shot is the only thing that makes the 357 a viable gun, in my opinion. Without it, this gun is terrible, but with it, it's actually one of the best secondary weapons in the game, and you will absolutely dominate all of the other pistols if you're within about 8 meters and you're hitting your pellets. And with that, that wraps it up for the stats of this gun. Now I just want to quickly go over some of my favorite attachments to use. And I'm going to show two setups. The first one is without snake shot. And I would only recommend this if you don't have snake shot unlocked already. But with this particular one, we're using that silver field barrel, which has no downsides, but it improves our range a little bit. Got the one milliwatt laser for those really close quarter situations. Sometimes it's best to just hip fire on them and kind of spam those two bullets out as fast as possible. We've also got the Solo Zero Mini Reflex. I don't really like the iron sights when I'm trying to line up a nice precise headshot, and therefore I like using some form of a red dot. Of course, we've got that lightweight trigger on there so we can shoot it at least a little bit faster. It's still extremely slow, but it's slightly faster with the lightweight trigger. And then sleight of hand because having that really quick reload is really helpful with this gun. As for my setup with snake shots, with this one, once again, we've got that lightweight trigger and sleight of hand. Both of these are great. And again, we've got that one milliwatt laser. We typically want to aim down sight while using snake shot, but sometimes there's just no time for that. And you want to get that shot off as fast as possible. This just leaves us with the barrel, which again, I went with the silver field barrel just because there's no downsides and we still do want to be aiming down sight. So I don't want to use the really long barrel and really significantly reduce that aim down sight speed. So that's why I prefer this one. Now, of course, a third option would be to use this with the akimbo attachment, and that can be kind of fun to spam those out as well. And in that case, I would use the longer barrel because we don't need to worry about our aim down sight time at that point. But with that, that finally wraps it up for today's gun guide on the 357. I think I've already pretty much shared all my thoughts on this gun. I think it's just horrible without snake shot, but really good with it. But of course, those are all just my opinions. I'd like to know in the comment section below, what do you guys think about the 357, both with and without snake shot? Also, that does cover it for all of the pistols that are currently in the game, and this just leaves us with shotguns, sniper rifles, and launchers. So I'm interested in hearing in the comments down below, which category would you like me to cover next? I'm thinking about doing launchers all in one video, whereas of course, snipers and shotguns will be separate episodes for each of those. So just let me know which one of those categories you'd like me to cover next. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.